good out there um i just want to do uh you know show you a little something here uh, i don't know if you can see it but i've got this super old uh tube echoplex sitting there um uh, it's a real early one like real real early a small box gray tube version it's, it's like serial number 203 you know these were these were made in uh Willoughby, Ohio, which is originally designed by Mike Battle, I think. You know who came from Willoughby, Ohio? Well, Willowick, actually, the, the neighboring suburb. Uh, the Starship Trooper came from there. Uh, graduated of East Lake North High School in 1987. But yeah, uh, burst into the plex, into my little Gretsch my favorite amp ever made, my little 
Gretsch uh, combo with the Hillbilly 12 conversion. Um, now, check it out. I'm going to show you something, okay? You know, there's all these pedals being made and things, you know, people trying to emulate this tape echo, uh, uh, you know, preamp thing, right? This one is pretty bizarre because it actually has like a, a volume control for the, because it's such an early model. So this is really not a really a fair comparison because most of them don't have this, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's better than plugging straight into the amp, even if you don't use the effect, but I'm just saying it's different. So dig this. I'm going to play a little bit. Okay. itself is not working on this device but that's typical but Ebo can fix that Ebo is great at working on these uh, echo plexes so now I'm just gonna plug it right in the amp okay so here we go Without the Plex, you got a lot more high end, right? I, I, that's what I notice for sure. Um, but the sound, it's, it's just not as interesting. It's more one dimensional. It, uh, there's something more like rubbery and sort of fun about the going to the Plex preamp, right? And you can, on this particular model, you can goose that. I can make it fucking loud as hell. Run you out of the room with the preamp, but I'm trying to set it sort of at Unity Gang. Um, you know, it's a good, it's a good box, man. You know, especially when the echo works. Um, but dude, listen how noisy it is. Well, one of my favorite thing about old echo places is the way they smell when they're burning. Somebody should make a pedal that does that. A smell emitting pedal that, that puts off that same like old toy train transformer smell as this thing does. Now, now we'd be on to something. Oh. Man, that's a killer idea. I always thought there should be scented candles for guitar freaks, you know. We talked about this in some old episodes, you know, like one would be like burning Fender amp in the back seat of the car on the way home candle. Or like, uh, you know, you know, 
know, inside of a of an unmolded, not unmoldy smelling 1959 BS 335 case. That kind of thing. Scented candles for guitar freaks. So, all right. Um, what else can we talk about? Oh, when I was hanging around with uh, John Shanks out in, uh, in L.A., like, you know, he was he was telling me some funny stories about about hanging out with Jimmy Page, right? And we're all, of course, we're huge Jimmy Page fans, and you know, Jimmy apparently said to John, according to John, I wasn't there, of course, but he said that he never plays his guitar above eight, right? Uh, that's this, you know, these are probably, you know. Deep thoughts, you know, because, because uh, you know, that's the old British way, right? You, they use their guitar volume to sort of, you know, control things, you know. That's why people were so concerned about going from guitar to guitar, because some some guitars sound amazing when you turn the volume down to, to eight, seven, six, and some don't. And, you know, you can goof with the caps and all that stuff in the inside, but some guitars just naturally have a really cool thing when you turn them down a little bit. You know, you plug into an old Marshall turn the guitar all the way up and of course it's going to give you that big blaring thing but then when you back it down to eight it's it's amazing um still has clarity and top end but you know you you know you can play a bit softer more dynamically right and you know one of the key factors that people always n fail to remember is that when you're playing through a fuzz pedal um the guitar volume is crucial I'm, i mean uh I remember, remember that video I made a while back, um, um, that, that, that kid, that amazing guitar player that played in that band that I helped sort of co-produce, or didn't co-produce, but I, I just helped them get guitar tones, you know, ceramic animal band. I remember one moment when we were, you know, that, that guy, Anthony, was, was trying to play a solo, and he was trying to play through an old fuzz pedal, like it was an old, uh, you know, Marshall Super Fuzz or something like that, right? And, uh cranked the guitar all the way up, cranked the fuzz up a good bit, and we were in the control room listening to it, and it sounded terrible. It sounded like a, like a bad, you know, heavy metal album or something, you know, like really bad. And we were like, oh, Lord, what are we going to do with that? And uh, and I just said, man, let me try something. I went out there, and I, I told him, turn your guitar volume down to like three, but keep the fuzz cranking, you know? And, uh, man, so much more interesting of, of a cool sound, you know, happened, you know, with the, with the fuzz and the lower output coming from the guitar. See, a lot of people are already hip to this. I'm just telling you. There's some magic in there, okay? You know, guys like Eric Johnson uh, have been studying that for for years, you know, and, and uh, they're experts on, on the guitar volume versus the fuzz thing, you know? Mm. You know, same thing goes with the Psychoplex stuff. You know, all these types of things. Um... There's a lot of magic in there. Uh, when we were on the, uh, that just cracks me up when, when people, also with the tone controls, right? It just absolutely cracks me up when I hear guitar players say, ah, I don't need controls, you know, give me one knob, put it on 10, you know, it's like, oh wow, great, you know, no tone control, no expression with the volume control and stuff, it's just like, it's like, okay, great. You know, it worked for some people, I mean, that's kind of how Eddie did it, you know. Well, he worked his volume a lot, though. But, uh, man, I, I just don't get that. I feel like I'm looking for as much expressive control as possible when I'm playing, you know. That's why I love Gibson's with the layout of the two volumes and two tones, you know. It's like so much magic in there with when, when you goof with these tones and you're flipping the switch. and Oh, Lord, it's a good design, you know. Um... Let's see what we talk about. Um, you know, sustain, right? You know, like people see, like like when I do a live gig, sometimes I'll go, oh, I'll go do a bend, you know, be holding the bend and I'll grab the guitar up here. I don't know. I, no one ever taught me that. I don't know what it is, but I just noticed, I have no explanation for this physically, you know, quantum physics. Bend the note or you bend a couple notes and you're holding thing and you grab it up here and squeeze it. I don't know why, but it just makes the guitar sort of sustain longer. And it goes it goes into crazy feedback more, especially when you're at high volume. Um, it's a cool it's a cool thing. Um, I just sort of stumbled on that by accident one day. I don't know what that does or why it works, but it works. Um, try it sometime. It doesn't really work, you know, on a 
bedroom volume Fender Mustang amp. But when you're cranking and you're playing through some tough guy gear, and uh, you try that, it works pretty cool. It's a cool thing, it's a cool thing. But don't tell anybody about that, because that's my thing, okay? All right, uh, I remember, you know, that what I was just playing there, you know, I was using this, this Herco, and I was goofing around with these sort of serrated, teethy, sort of, you know, Joe Walsh things, you know. It's a cool sound, you know. It's, it adds a lot of dimension to, to, like, distortion, you know what I mean, I feel. What can I show you for a lick? Let's see. Oh, Lord. What are you guys doing today? I'm just kind of chilling today. Um, we got to go back on the road. Um, and then the 20th, we're going back out. But uh, I'm super excited. I get to see my son's talent show. Um, my nine-year-old is... Uh, He's got this little three-piece band together for a talent show at school, and they're gonna crush it. They've been rehearsing and rehearsing, and uh, he's playing guitar, and my friend Danny's son is playing drums, and a guy named Graham's playing piano, and man, they got some cool little thing worked up. It's gonna be amazing. I get to see it, praise God. Um, I was afraid I was gonna miss it, because we travel that day, but it's an early gig, and I get to see it. I'm very excited. Man, and yesterday, you know, not to be that proud dad that just gloats about his son because but man I, I can't tell you how cool Marshall is getting on guitar man he's just really and everything he's playing every instrument but yesterday I, I gave him an old telly plugged him into an old plexi and I said here man this is what people like about tellies and I showed him how to how to get down by the bridge and twang those low notes you know I showed him all that First time, he, can you? I remember specifically. I'll never forget the first time I ever felt that feeling, twanging low notes on a telly. It's oh lord! Once you feel that one time, you're in, man. Right? He was loving it. Uh, what a cool thing! Guitar is cool. All right, guys, have a great day, Uncle Larry. Over and out.